Play whatever you want, honey. Just play some pretty music. Worship here at Memorial United Methodist Church. I'm Reverend Jeanette Savetra, the pastor of the congregation, and we are worshiping today from my living room set. And uh, I'm very grateful to have um, my helpers with me today, which is my family, my husband playing guitar for us, and my children, Allie and Mondo, who will be helping throughout the service. They are the singers, the liturgists, the tech crew, they are everything and uh, I'm so grateful for their presence today. I want to remind you that a worship is not really a performance. It's not about what I'm doing. It's about what we bring before God. And as we come before God and open our hearts and minds in faith, God reaches in and touches us and blesses us and renews us, inspires us, calms us, puts our feet on a better path. And so I want to invite you to bring your whole self to God. In this season of Lent, which is the 40 days leading up to Easter celebration, in this season of Lent, we have been using a worship series designed by Dr. Marsha McPhee. Um, it can be found on her website, worshipdesignstudio.com. And 
this worship series invites us to reconnect with an unhurried God. And in the season of Lent, we often give up something for Lent, and we're supposed to give up hurrying and give up worrying. And that has been really important this season of Lent, most especially. And so as we come here today, uh, we don't have everything perfectly. We certainly were not prepared to begin leading worship from our living room. And so we're a little rough on the edges, and I think that is actually okay. We're not going to worry about it. We're, we're fasting from worry. We're rough on the edge, but we all are, aren't we? We always are. Sometimes we can put on a facade that we have our act all together, but it's just a facade. There's no one who has their act all together. And so we're going to come honestly before God and open our hearts and minds. So throughout the service, you will have a chance to join in the worship. It's not just me and my family, but you will have a chance to join in the worship. We're going to have um, screens that you can say the words along with us and sing the hymns along with us and invite you to stand up and sit down like you would if you were in a sanctuary in a congregation gathered for worship. And as we come before God and bring our whole selves as honestly and as completely as we can, we will find that our lives are blessed and renewed and transformed. So as we're entering into this time, I want to say I hope you have your kids there. If you have a family, please get your family all together. We have a children's moment today. We're going to have some fun. Um, if you um, are not fluent in English, if Hmong is your primary language, we have the Hmong on all of our slides. So you can um, follow along, you can sing along. I'm sorry that once again we don't have Hmong leadership up here. Um, I am not great at learning new languages. And, um, and so, um, but I will invite you to sing along and to say the scripture with us. Um, we have the slides to help with that. If you would like to have your children help in other ways, um, I would encourage you to have one or two candles with you. Um, we often have the children bring in the light or maybe a, a parent with a child will bring in the light of Christ. And so when we get to that point, you can light your first candle and then later when we move to our prayer chair we can light the second candle and so I invite you to have one or two candles and, and matches or a lighter of some kind and, and you can participate there with your family and create your worship space right there in your living room as well. There are lots of responses in our worship today and we've done those by putting some of the words will be in white font and some of them will be in black font. And so I want you to choose who you're going to follow. Allie's going to read the words in white font, and Mondo's going to read the words in black font. And if you have more than one person there in the house with you, you can divide up. And some of you can read with Allie, and some of you can read with Mondo. Um, and it's the same. Um, the white font will have English and Hmong words. And so just, you'll get used to that very quickly. But just so you look at it, you don't panic and go, I don't know what those words are. It's fine. There's English and there's Hmong in white, and there's English and there's Hmong in black, okay? And we're going to take it slow as we're reading together because not everybody reads at the same speed. And so if you read a little bit faster, that's okay. I'd like to invite you to take time to think about the words that you're reading. If we haven't advanced to the next screen and, and you're done and you're ready to go on, remember we're fasting from hurry. It gives us time to think about the words and not just say them, all right? So with all of that in mind, we're going to turn to our call to worship. And let's read this together. Jesus Christ is with us. Jesus Christ is our Savior. Jesus Christ died for our sin. Jesus Christ saves our life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. And now I'm going to invite you to light the candle as we begin our time of worship more fully. We want to remember that the light of the love of God is always here with us. It's always in our midst. And so we have a candle on our altar to remind us of that. 
And so if you have children at home or if you have your own candle for your worship space, please light that. And as you're doing that, I invite you to take a deep breath in. Breathe in the peace of Christ and exhale. Joy of the Lord. Let's do that again. Breathe in. The peace of Christ and exhale. The joy of the Lord. And I'm going to invite us to join together in reading our opening prayer. And that will be followed by our opening song, which is Kumbaya. I, I didn't mention that the words in yellow are for everyone. So the opening prayer will be in yellow. Kumbaya will be in yellow. Everyone joining together in this. So let's join together now in our opening prayer. All to Jesus I surrender, all to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him, in his presence daily live. All to you, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. Let us surrender our lives before God as we join in our opening hymn. Goodbye.
have some fun. If you have your kids, make sure they're nearby. And if you don't have kids, it's for the young at heart as well. So we're going to do a children's moment. And I want to talk to the kids about the past, the present, and the future. And I have practiced this cool trick for at least 120 seconds. And I'm sure I'm going to do it perfectly. So we're going to put this, you know how the, the cup game is played, right? You put the ball under one, and I'm going to move the cups all around, and you try to keep track of it, okay? All right, so we're going to try this, all right? So I'm going to move the cups all around, keeping track of it. Are you keeping track of it? Do you know where it is? Hmm? All right, is it under cup number one, cup number two, or cup number three? Which do you say? Let's look. Is it under, what do you think? Number three? Let's look. Nope. Number two? Nope. Number one? Who guessed number one? Woohoo! You got it right. You want to do it again? Let's try it again. Okay. Putting it under the center one, representing the present. Past, present, and future. Okay. Past, present, and future. Here we go. Do you know where it is now? Do you know where it is? You think it's under number two? Let's look. Nope. Okay, number three? Nope. Under number one again. Yep, you got it. Okay, best. Three out of four, right? Okay, here we go. Three out of five or something. Here we go. One more time. It's in the middle. Follow it along. Okay? See what you can do. See if you can follow it. Are you following it? Do you know where it is? Oops. It's on the floor. <laughs> Okay, we'll try it one last time. All right. all right, so I got it. It's going under this one. That's why I had to practice it for all of two minutes to try to not do that, but of course I did. Okay. So where do you think it is now? You think it's under number one? Let's look. Nope. Number three? Okay, so here's the thing. While you are doing this, you're trying to watch where the cup is, right? The one that has the ball under it. But if you lose your focus for just a little bit, you miss the important part of where that went, right? If you blink, if you look away, if you think of something else, you miss where that went. How many people found it every time? How many people watched it the whole way? And got it every time because here's the thing especially for kids we're always asking our kids right kids how many times do adults say to you things like what do you want to be when you grow up right not what do you enjoy doing right now what's your favorite hobby right we're always inviting you to look to the future and so sometimes as kids we're always waiting can't wait to grow up I can remember two big times in my life when I was thinking about that one time, um, every week when I was growing up, we got an allowance. And we got five cents for every year old we were. And I can remember doing the math and telling my dad, I can't wait until I'm 20 years old because I'll get a whole dollar every week. Now that sounds kind of funny to us now, right? Because a dollar doesn't go very far. But that was really big to me. And my dad even laughed when I told him that. Um, realizing that by the time I was 20, one dollar wasn't going to be that big to me either. Right, but I was really excited about that idea, looking to the future, what it was gonna be like when I grow up. I can remember another time when I was really upset with one of my parents, and I was walking along the street, I was outside walking, trying to blow off a little bit of steam, and I can remember very clearly thinking, when I grow up, I'm never gonna do that, ever. I remember that very clearly. I remember what it was my parents did and I probably have done it in my lifetime but I remember how angry I was and how I was swore I'd never do that when I grow up right we're, we're often invited to look to the future and we're always making plans for the future but what I want you to remind you is that being a kid is a special time once you grow up you're not a kid anymore and I want you to take time to enjoy the present 
to be mindful of the present, to every day see what God is bringing into your life that's joyful right now. And I know for some of you that being a kid is pretty hard. It can be pretty hard, but being an adult can be pretty hard as well, right? So look and see what God is doing. God is never abandoning you. God is there with you, bringing you something beautiful and something joyful every day. So look around, take time to enjoy the present. Okay? Let's have a word of prayer. Loving God, we are grateful for all the times of our lives, when we're young and when we're old and all the places in between. And we ask that you would help us to be mindful each day of your holy presence with us, to appreciate each season of our life, and to appreciate all those who are in different seasons recognizing that in your wonderful family of faith, you have created us so very differently and blessed each one uniquely. Help us to find the joy in that diversity and to celebrate it every day. And we pray all of this in the name of Jesus and in the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. So now we're going to... Um, do the scripture reading. And I want to tell you just a little bit about the scripture reading. The scripture reading is from Ecclesiastes, from the third chapter, and it's a very famous scripture reading. You will hear it read in all kinds of settings, but when I was a kid, when I was growing up, and for many of you, when you were kids, or maybe even when your children were kids, this was a scripture was made into a popular song. It was written by Pete Seeger, and made into a popular song by the birds. But the scripture actually comes from the writings of Solomon. And it's uh, the third chapter of Ecclesiastes. We're gonna again invite you to go back and forth with the white print and the black print. And then the yellow print is everyone together. And then right after the scripture reading, we're gonna go ahead and have our anthem for the day. And everyone's invited to sing along as we sing the, the song that goes with this scripture. And it's called Turn, Turn, Turn. Well, let's turn our attention to the scripture reading now. Um, for everything, there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. A time to throw away stones, and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. What gain have the workers from their toil? I have seen the business that God has given to everyone to be busy with. 
God has made everything suitable for its time. Moreover, God has put a sense of past and future into their minds, yet they cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. I know that there is nothing better for them than to be happy and enjoy themselves as long as they live. Moreover, it is God's gift that all should eat and drink and take pleasure in all their toil. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to reap, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to laugh, a time to weep. To everything turn, turn, turn. There is a season, turn, 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 and a time to every purpose under heaven. A time to build up, a time to break down, a time to dance, a time to mourn, a time to cast away stones, a time to gather stones together To everything turn, turn, turn There is a season turn, turn, turn And a time to every purpose A time to love, a time to hate, a time of war, a time of peace. A time you may embrace, a time to refrain from embracing. To everything turn, 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 there is a season. A time to gain, a time to lose, a time to rent, a time to sow, a time of love, a time of hate, a time of peace, I swear is not too late. To everything, turn, 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 there is a season, turn. good together and I appreciate my family joining in to help lead this portion of worship. So now we turn to a time to discuss the scripture reading and part of the power of the words in the Bible is that they 
speak to us at every point in our life, at every age, they speak to us. As you were listening to the scripture today, as you were reading it along, did you hear some scriptures that jumped out at you differently than maybe ever before? I know I did. When it says a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, that's one of the big things that's on our minds right now, right? We want to keep six feet apart so we do our hugs and we do our Sistine Chapel handshakes, right? We don't actually touch right now. That's the season we're in, right? A time to gather things and a time to get rid of things. Yes, many of us with a little bit of time on our hands are finding time to do some purging that we've been meaning to do, that we've been putting off doing, and now is a good time to do that, right? But in this part of the world, we're in the middle of a season. We're just moving into spring, and so we have a little bit of rain, a little bit of sun. Temperatures are in the 50s and the 60s. Um, sometimes down into the 40s, even the 30s a little bit. In other places in the world, this season is still quite cold, right? What's your favorite season in the year, right? What's your favorite season? Well, for me, my favorite season is summer. And in this part of the world, summers are really hot. But I grew up where it was really hot, and so I'm really comfortable with that. Of course, when I was growing up as a kid, I got to spend a lot of time at the pool and at the lakes and in water and now not so much, but uh, it's still my favorite time of year. When I first moved back to this area of the state from where I had been serving previously, somebody said to me, you know, the summers here are really hot and the winters are kind of foggy and cold and gloomy, but the spring and the fall are so beautiful and I love those two months. I always thought that was great, not those two seasons, but those two months because in this part of the world, summer comes kind of early and lasts pretty late and winter lasts a fairly long time too, but we have these beautiful two months of spring and of fall that we can really enjoy, right? There's a beautiful part to every season Seasons that change in the world around us that guide our steps and, and the seasons of our lives when we're children, when we're youth and young adults, to our middle years and then on into our maturity, right? Different kinds of blessings at each stage of the way. But like I was talking with the kids, so much of the time we are focused on some other time. Some other time, making our plans and our dreams or reminiscing about what was. When I was in college, I had a creative writing class. And in that class, there was a young man who'd written a story. And this was his story. His story was a true story. He said, you know, when I was in junior high, we did A, B, C, and, and it was pretty fun. But I was really looking forward to high school. And then when I got to high school... We were doing X, Y, Z, and that was pretty fun. But I looked back to junior high and I thought, you know what? I missed so much of the fun that I had in junior high because I was so focused on what was going to be in the future that I didn't even realize the wonderful days and the wonderful fun I was having in junior high. And, and then he said, and now I'm in college and I realized that I spent my whole high school days looking to the future, looking to college for the good times I would be having in college and not enjoying my high school days. And, and my high school days were wonderful. Those were probably the best days of my life, he said. Those were the best days of my life and they're gone now because I was focused on the future. I didn't appreciate them at the time. And when he sat down after sharing his writing, the whole class was like, but isn't the lesson that the time you're in is the best time of your life? Like, he'd already written off his college years because they couldn't possibly top the high school years. And he was looking back once again about how wonderful it was rather than focused on the, the present. How many of us are like that, though? We're always thinking about what we're going to do tomorrow or down the line. 
or what a wonderful time we had before and missing the blessings of the day. Now, in this time, this is a season that none of us planned for. Very few people in the world were preparing for a pandemic. This is an unusual season. Very unusual. We weren't expecting this at all. We weren't planning for it and preparing for it. We weren't looking forward to it. We weren't even dreading it. But suddenly it's here. A season unlike any other that most of us have experienced. And how do we find the blessing in this moment when there's so much fear and so much worry and so much doubt, so much concern? Where's the, the joy? Well, I want to remind you that in every season, there is doubt, there is worry, there is burden, there is concern. And while some of us may have the joy of, of missing that while we're enjoying a season of, of opportunities and privileges, there are many in our world that have never experienced a season of opportunity or privilege. That this season that the world is sharing is an experience that's very common for many people. Scarcity of products and uncertainty of where their resources will come from and whether their health will be protected and unable to take time off to care for their families and loved ones. And this is a reality for many people in our world. And the question is, how do we, awakening to this reality, how do we find the blessing in it? And maybe the blessing is that awakening. Maybe it is a shared understanding and realization that somehow we've gotten our priorities out of step with what God has planned in our world. I'm seeing more and more people posting pictures on Facebook celebrating the doctors and the nurses who are staying at their posts and giving care, celebrating the workers at the checkout line at the grocery store who are staying on the front line and, and making sure that we have a place to go and buy some food and celebrating the truckers that continue to haul the products for us and celebrating the garbage collectors that are still out there picking up the garbage, right? These are people that in an ordinary week, we would not see a meme on Facebook saying, wow, I'm so grateful for this person. Maybe it's an awakening that all along these people are important to us, important to the very fabric of our societies, and maybe haven't been getting the respect they deserve. On the first day of, of the enforced stay uh, shelter in place, the modified shelter in place that we're um, experiencing here in California on the first day a meme popped up that said 10 minutes into homeschooling my kids I now know that teachers should be paid a billion dollars right? how much of the time do teachers take the brunt of the blame for the failure of our education system as it's perceived by some people or, or for uh, having cushy jobs in which they get paid exorbitant salaries when in fact they don't get paid hardly anything and they put in their own pocket money a lot of times to pay for the expenses of their classrooms, right? So maybe part of the blessing that we're experiencing is just awakening up to the reality that we strip away all the, the glamour and the glitz and where we imagine the world should be and see what really is here now and recognize the people who make our lives enjoyable on a daily basis and start to show appreciation to those people. That's a part of the blessing. Maybe another part of the blessing is an opportunity to reevaluate how we've structured our economy. That there's so much hurry, right? There's so much busyness that when we have to step back from it, we don't know how to survive economically. 
It's a real problem for many of us. And if it's not a problem for you, I want you to look around and see those who are struggling. I talked to one grandmother whose all of her grandchildren have lost their jobs. And even her children are in danger of losing their livelihood. This is a serious problem. How did we get to this situation? How did we get to the place where we're all in such a rush to earn money just to pay the rent when there's very little time for rest and renewal to reconnect with our unhurried God? Maybe part of the blessing of this season, the season of Lent, a time of reflection, maybe this Lent, more than any before, in our lifetimes, maybe this Lent is a season when we can really reflect on where we've been headed and where God is calling us to be and make some course adjustments that will last well beyond the end of our confinement. We have a lot, a lot of opportunities before us, a lot of beauty to enjoy, a lot of ways to reconnect with our loving and gracious God. And so we're gonna take a little bit of time now to move away from the worry so that we might actually enjoy what God is doing. Throughout Lent, we've been invited to have a, a God box and a prayer chair. And so we're gonna to move to that now. Um, for me, my prayer chair is in my, my family room. Um, this is the formal living room that we don't use as much, so we turn this into our set for the worship center. But in our family room is where I usually sit. And, um, and so we have a candle. So you light the candle when you sit down there. So it's not your time to be on Facebook or, or checking your games or watching the TV. We will light the candle to help us remember that Jesus is with us and we're going to be focused on Jesus and the light of his love in our lives. So I invite you to take and light your second candle now, if you have a second candle. And get out your God box. I'm gonna walk around here because I don't trust that I'm not gonna knock over the candle. Okay, and so, um, my tech team is giving me some signs. Yes, we're going to be reading the prayer requests that have come in. And um, I don't know which camera they're going to use. Are you going to use your own phone? If you can bring your phone up, that would be great. Okay. Yes. So we're going to open our God box. And in our God box, we're going to put all of our worries. We remember that Jesus has told us not to worry. That it's God's pleasure to give us the kingdom. And it especially says, don't worry about the future. Every day has enough worries of its own. And so we open up our God box and we place all of our worries inside of here. And so let's look at the kind of worries that we're gonna place in here today. This would be our time of concerns. I have a fairly extensive list of people that we're gonna be praying for today. I'm gonna to start off by Lifting up Nasifu, Wang Pao, his wife, Yervang. She is a uh, in in a uh, battle. Uh, she's got cancer terminally. Lifting up Kathy Brummer, Lucy Elgin, Nancy Enlow, Richard Fertrell, Edie Dyer Fertrell, Gary Gentry, Tristan Graham. Ralph Harris, Stan Jananian. Stan's surgery has been postponed until after this um, COVID-19 crisis. So we want to hold him in prayers as he's in a holding pattern. Iona Mears, Norma Meek, Barbara Nielsen, Christiana Navuora, Carol Schweitzer, Joshua Yang, who is hospitalized right now. He has mononucleosis. And while they were checking to see what was wrong with him, they discovered he has, um, his heart is beating irregularly a little bit. So they're monitoring that. And 
He's one of our youth, and he uh, he can't have visitors right now, right? And they're not letting visitors into the hospital. So it must be a really scary time for Joshua. So let's hold him in our prayers a lot. Terry Scott. Um, Terry had another eye surgery this week, and she has some other complications arising in her life. We want to hold Terry in our prayers especially. Fran Schallenberger. Lifting up Joseph Yang. Joseph Vang. And I also want to lift up these people that have been brought to my attention, people who have been um, personally um, impacted by the virus, the coronavirus. Lifting up Boris, Paul, Tony, Della. We're lifting up Jason. And now we'll go to the prayer requests that we've received on online. What prayer requests do we have? Nothing online yet? Okay, that's all right. Next week, people will be more prepared, huh? I saw this beautiful prayer that I thought was perfect for this portion of our prayer time. This comes from the Diocese of Norwich. And it says, May we who are merely inconvenienced remember those whose lives are at stake. May we who have no risk factors remember those most vulnerable. May we who have the luxury of working from home remember those who must choose between preserving their health and paying the rent. May we, who have the flexibility to care for our children when schools are closed, remember those who have no options. May we, who have to cancel trips, remember those who have no safe place to go. May we, who are losing our margin money in the tumult of the economic market, Remember those who have no margin at all. May we, who settle into quarantine at home, remember those who have no home. As fear grips our country, let us choose love. During this time when we cannot physically wrap our arms around each other, let us find ways to be the loving embrace of God. To our neighbors. Amen. And as we put all of those concerns, all of those worries, all of those burdens into our God box, we close the box, God box and we join together in saying the serenity prayer. We're going to put it up on the screen today in case if you don't know the words to it. Let's say it together. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. And then, as we refocus our attention, we're going to read the verse from the fourth chapter of Philippians, verse 8. It says together, Finally, beloved, Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable. If there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. And so we turn to our joys. What joys do we lift up today? Well, I have a few joys. Of course, I lift up the joy of having my family helping me. That's huge. I lift up the joy of the way youth and young adults are being empowered to lead our churches. Suddenly, they know all the skills that we need in order to continue to build community in these unusual times. We are so blessed. 
to have active youth and young adults in our congregations, aren't we? I want to lift up a joy of a, an amazing and creative woman in our congregation. That's Karen Ledbetter. And I saw that this week she took a chair outside and sat out in her neighborhood to talk to people, to talk to her neighbors as they came by, and just to, to share some joy with them. What a wonderful thing to do. Thank you, Karen, for making that loving witness to be the loving embrace of God for your neighbors. I want to lift up that so far my dogs have been quiet. We're excited about that. What other things are we thankful for on this day? What are you thankful for? Uh, Sateri says, it's a joy to hear the Saavedra family voices. Thank mm. you very much. Indeed. Thank you, Siteri. And it's so good to have you watching and joining in worship today. We are blessed to be able to worship together, aren't we? Yes. And it is a blessing to be able to hear the music. And for me, I get to hear them rehearsing and practicing and singing. What a, what a wonderful blessing it is in my life. What other kinds of joys do we have? Uh, Nancy Price says, my pink camellas are blooming. Nice! How beautiful! I hope that you'll post up a picture of them in the comments later so we can all enjoy that too. Do we have other joys we want to lift up today? Of course we want to lift up people who are having birthdays and anniversaries, some who get to share their anniversaries with their loved ones and some who have fond memories of those anniversaries. We, we share those joys. We lift up people who are recovering from illnesses. We lift up the blessing of, of not too many people in our immediate family being impacted by the virus currently. We lift up the way all the world is coming together to find solutions to this problem. That so many of the squabbles that we've been struggling with are being set aside in favor of building a better and more healthy world. We give thanks for that. I know that there are many other blessings that we're lifting up today in our hearts and in our homes. And I want to encourage you to continue that as we move into a time of our pastoral prayer. Will you continue to be in prayer with me? For losing touch with creation, of which we are a part, forgive us. For the times when we don't let things unfold in their own time, Forgive us. Help us slow down when it is a season of our lives for doing so. Help us celebrate and embrace the ebbs and flow of life. Give us the ability to sense the balance so that we might take pleasure in our toil and enjoy the fruits of our labor. In this moment, we hear your promise. I have set in motion all you need for happiness. It is okay to slow down and reconnect with the world around you. You do not ask us to go back to some yesteryear, but to take time to smell the roses today, to savor the twilight, to bask in the sun, we are your children, created to flourish along with all of creation. And as your children, we join together in praying the prayer that Jesus taught us as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so, 
as we move from our prayer chair to complete our time of worship together. Ordinarily at this time, we would be receiving the morning offering. And I want to encourage you to continue to support your congregations. If you're a part of Memorial's congregation, that's wonderful. There on the website is a button and you can make your contributions online or you can mail a check to the office. It's on our website, but I can tell you it's 1726 Pulaski Avenue in Clovis, 93612. But if you're not a member of Memorial, support the congregation where you do attend. If you don't support any congregations, if you don't attend church regularly, find a charity that's helping with the hospitals or helping provide food and make a donation to them. As we have received so many blessings, let us pass that along to make a gift to bless others. And now we're going to take time to bless these offerings. I'm going to invite you as you're I'm willing to go ahead and stand up for that prayer of dedication, and that will be followed by the doxology, which is a song of praise. That's what doxology means, a song of praise. And then you can stay standing, and we're going to join in our closing song, which is a song of peace, a wish for good health. And I'm just going to tell you up front, there's going to be Hmong words, and there's going to be Hebrew words. And then there will be Hmong words and English words. Okay, so you can try whatever languages you want to give a try. If you're not familiar with Hebrew, um, do it as best you can. Um, it's fine because probably nobody in your house is there to criticize you, and we're not going to worry about it anyway, right? We're going to sing the song of peace, Shalom Shavarim, okay? So let's join in prayer, then the doxology, and then our closing song. Here we go. Loving God, we are grateful for the ways you have blessed our lives, grace upon grace. And we ask that you would accept the offerings that we bring back to you. The offerings of our lives and of our resources. And we ask that you would bless these offerings to be useful to you in building up ministries that glorify your name, that bring health and wholeness, that bind the family of God together all across the world. And tell all can see one another as brothers and sisters bask in the light of your love. May your light shine through our lives to bring a blessing to every family on the earth. And this we pray in the name of Jesus and in the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. It's number 667.
may you notice creation around you and how effortlessly it passes the time. May you see the passing of time as a friend with all its fast and its slow. May you delight in the season of right now, even this season of right now. And may you be reacquainted each day with an unhurried God who is calling you to dive deeply into love. And now I invite you to join in the unison benediction. From Ephesians, third chapter, verses 20 and 21. And now to our, our God, God, who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish far more abundantly than all we could ask or imagine, to God be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus our Lord to all generations forever. Say it like you mean it. Amen. Amen.